Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Rocket, 2, 6. Hello team, welcome to the Watchtower, and welcome also to our ninth installment of Secret Origins. In this series, we'll be diving into the history of the main characters in Young Justice, the heroes, the supporting cast, and even the villains. Today, we wrap up our coverage of the core Season 1 team by covering the Dakota City hero and key player in the Season 1 finale, Rocket. Many of the Dakota City heroes have a much less extensive history than other DC heroes, so we will also be covering the history of her mentor, Icon. Before we get started, I wanted to apologize. I'm recording today the same day that I recorded our previous Zatanna episode. I have been putting off recording for several weeks, waiting for this cold to subside, but apparently, like many of my friends in the U.S., this season's colds are weeks-long endeavors, and I have come to accept that this is my life now, so please excuse the sound of my voice. And with all that out of the way, let's dive in. You know, I was the one who convinced the Icon to become a hero in the first place. I should be outside celebrating with him, not hidden away in here. Welcome to our world. Well, I suppose there's an upside, too. Finally, Green Arrow welcomes his former protege, Speedy, now known as Red Arrow, to this roster of heroes. <laughs> Way to go, Roy! At last, he has his wish. The first of us to make it? No one will call him a sidekick anymore. Wait, since when is being a sidekick a bad thing? You sidekicks were my inspiration. So the first appearance of both Rocket and Icon were Icon issue number one in May 1993, and the characters were both created by Dwayne McDuffie and Dennis Cowan. What's interesting about, even though the, the comic was called Icon, the letters column of their comic, uh, I think it was around issue three, uh, sent out a question. Basically, who do you think that this series is about? Is it about Icon? Is it about Rocket? Is it about both? And the answer that basically kind of won this, I guess, informal contest was a comment that the story was about both characters, but it was entirely should be told from the perspective of Rocket, which I found was fascinating. So before we get into the origin of Rocket and Icon, a little history lesson. So the character of Rocket, as well as Virgil Hawkins, aka Static, uh, Icon, and a range of other characters were first introduced by a company called Milestone Media. Milestone Media was founded in 1993 and produced two major projects. Milestone Comics, which were produced and distributed by DC Comics and then eventually absorbed into DC Comics, and the Static Shock animated series that many of our listeners are familiar with. Milestone was founded by a group of African-American artists and writers who believed minority creators and characters were sorely misrepresented in the comics industry, one of those creators was the late and very great Dwayne McDuffie. Dwayne McDuffie had a degree in English and a master's degree in physics. In fact, he'd been pursuing a career in physics until he found out that his research into the properties of thermocouples were being used in missile technology. After he quit the field, a friend had referred him to Marvel as an editor, and he worked for both Marvel and DC Comics as an employee and a freelancer, creating Damage Control, who we just saw in the recent Spider-Man Homecoming movie from Marvel Comics, and uh, making the contacts he needed for Milestone to be supported by DC Comics. After Milestone stopped producing comics, Static Shock began production and Dwayne McDuffie was brought on as writer and editor. That work led him to working on other animated series like Justice League Unlimited, Ben 10 Alien Force, and he also happened to write two of my favorite direct-to-DVD animated DC movies, Justice League Doom and Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. In 2008, DC announced that Milestone characters would be revived and integrated into the DC continuity, bringing Static to the Titans and allowing slash encouraging the Young Justice team to integrate them into the Young Justice animated series. So let's move on to Rocket. In the original Milestone universe, the characters uh, that we're talking about largely lived in a Midwestern city called Dakota. Rocket, or Raquel Irvine, Irvine? Irvin, E-R-V-I-N, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, there's no E at the end, was born and raised uh, in a place called Paris Island, which was the most crime-ridden neighborhood in Dakota. Raquel came across Augustus Freeman IV, a corporate lawyer who was secretly a superpowered alien, 
stranded on Earth, a.k.a. Icon. We'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, she convinced him to both become a superhero and to take her on as his sidekick. Rocket's powers that we see in the show and in the comics are based on the belt she wears, which was built from the technology of Icon's escape pod. And we'll talk about both their sets of powers in a bit. Rocket is also the first character in comic history to be a single mother. Her son, Amistad Augustus Irvin, was never introduced in Young Justice, but I'm wondering if we might see him now that we know that she got married in Season 2. On to Icon. So the hero known as Icon is actually an alien named Arnis from the planet Terminus within an organization of planetary civilizations called The Collective. In 1839, Arnis was a baby traveling on a galactic cruise liner with his family. That galactic cruise liner malfunctioned and exploded. He was saved in an escape pod and landed on Earth in a field of a cotton plantation. The pod automatically altered his DNA and appearance to have him appear as a member of the first race, sentient race, to find him. In this case, an enslaved African-American woman named Miriam. But the pod didn't simply adapt Arnis's appearance uh, with his DNA. It maximized the potential of his human DNA and combined it with his Terminian DNA. Icon has stated that his powers are simply the common endpoint of evolution for all humans once they get past their limitations. Arnis was given the name Augustus Freeman by his mother, and because of his Terminian physiology, he is extremely long-lived and has periodically taken on the identity of his own son. In the modern age, he is Augustus Freeman IV. Aside from his very broad and uh, powerful power set, Augustus has been a skilled lawyer for over a century and is highly experienced in American and international law. For decades after he regained contact with his home, he has also become trained in intergalactic law. Though he's been in possession of his powers for over a century and used them to provide maybe some minor help to people over the ages, it wasn't until he met Raquel that he made the jump to full-on superhero. The powers of Rocket and Icon uh, are different, but they're both based uh, on this collective either technology or the collective technology that altered Icon's DNA. For Rocket, uh, aside from her being a gifted writer, uh, which is her goal in life, uh, she's also a gifted gymnast and a skilled martial artist, the, the latter there over time training with Icon. Uh, all of Raquel's powers derive from the belt I mentioned that Icon built for her. The belt uses a power source from Icon's ship that manipulates gravity, momentum, and inertia. The belt surrounds her with an invisible field of energy that absorbs and redirects kinetic energy, and when it does do that, it glows that purple glow, violet glow that we see in the series. Aside from protecting her and projecting fields of protective energy, Rocket can also, at least in the comics, use the stored energy to enhance her punches, to add kinetic energy to objects that she throws, which is really interesting. In fact, in the comics, she's thrown, quote-unquote, a bullet at a high-caliber rifle velocity. Of course, she can also fly and project blasts of force. In the first season of the series, we only see her using these protective force fields and flying, but I would like to see more uh, in season three with both Rocket and Icon. I'll talk about that in a little bit. We might see her power set expand out. In the comics, she could also surround someone in a version of that force bubble that she called an, an inertialess field, immobilizing them but also potentially knocking them unconscious because it doesn't just stop the movement of the person inside. It also stops the movement of the air inside. So the field no longer moves into their lungs. So they end up passing out. The field only works on kinetic energy though. So it leaves her and whoever she's protecting or you know trying to hold vulnerable to attacks like fire, lasers, electricity, energetic attacks. Icon, however, his power set is pretty bro pretty broad. Um, he has superhuman strength, speed, and reflexes. Uh, he's the ability to think, move, and react at superhuman speeds. He has uh, near limitless stamina uh, in all of his physical activities. Uh, that said that he produces uh, the common byproducts 
of metabolic waste much slower than other humans, uh, human hybrids. He can also fly. He flies by the psychic manipulation of gravitons and um, by manipulating magnetic fields. He can fly at supersonic speeds, though I don't know if we know a top end for his speed or his strength for that matter. All of his senses are heightened to peak to superhuman levels, sight, smell, taste, hearing. He has enhanced mental perception as well. He can kind of basically process and comprehend things, observe things uh, in a way much faster than normal humans. He's near and vulnerable, uh, extremely durable, but uh, he has been damaged in the comics. And when he does so, he regenerates. Uh, and he's even after having a major, major uh, chest wound by a character called Payback, Icon uh, regenerated that damage and then started wearing kind of an alien body armor to be even more protective. In addition to all those powers, he also has the ability to manipulate uh, and project energy. He can project concussive force blasts that uh, can knock people backwards and punch through walls. He has stun bolts that actually stun the nervous system of people he uh, uses them on to knock them unconscious. He can enhance his punches, actually, and release an energy pulse. And these energy pulses, uh, also called like a positronic field, he can use to basically like a radar. In the Dakotaverse, the original Milestone universe, if I remember correctly, there were metahumans, but most of the characters gained their powers via something called the Big Bang, which was an event that happened involving some chemicals uh, and some people got people ended up dying in this chemical release, but some other people had uh, gained these superpowers. Icon has been able to detect what they call bang babies by projecting this positronic field that causes them to basically generate this low level uh, amount of gamma radiation that he can then detect. So he can distinguish kind of bang babies from other metahumans and normal humans as well. So, as far as Young Justice is concerned, what I find interesting is that though Milestone produced comics for about four years, and there's uh, quite a backlog you can go back to read, and, and uh, unlike some of these characters from our, you know, from the show, you can literally very reasonably read through their entire history. Young Justice was introduced about the same time as the New Fifty Two reboot in 2011, and. Though both Icon and Rocket are clearly a part of the Young Justice universe, neither has been heavily represented in either New 52 or Rebirth. Uh, I've heard he Icon has a brief uh, appearance in uh, the short-lived Static comic. Rocket had shown up at some point to help Wonder Woman with something, but... That's pretty much it. So Rocket's powers in Young Justice were critical to the success of the team at the end of season one. She used her uh, inertia control powers to trap both Black Canary and Wonder Woman, uh, which would have been near impossible for anybody else to do. Though unsuccessful in defending the League on Rimbor, Icon was still front and center in those episodes, including making clear references to his history as a lawyer and kind of referencing the fact that they don't know much about his history. If I remember correctly, Canary had said something like, for some reason he seems well-versed in intergalactic law. Uh, the collective is directly referenced by Blue Scarab when Rocket and Zatanna trap Blue and kidnap him to take him to the Bialyan Temple to shut down his Scarab, including mentioning the fact that Rocket's restraining bubble gets stronger with physical punishment doesn't make much mention about energetic punishment. And I, in our review episode uh, of that episode of the show, I even talked about how interesting that was that the Scarab knew this, but he didn't answer this question until he was directly asked it by the scientist. And until that time, he was using physical punishment on Rocket's bubble. Then when he tried to use a sonic blast at the direct order of the uh, ambassador and the, the scientist, that's when Zatanna had um, reinforced it with her magic. I'm hoping that with the theme of a galaxy-wide metagene weapons ring going into Young Justice Outsiders, we'll get to see much more of both Icon and Rocket. 
Rocket will be well into her 20s by the time season three rolls around, and Icon having a lifespan that is centuries longer than humans. Both could still play critical roles on the galactic stage. If so, we may end up getting more of their story within a standard kind of DC continuity than we have in the actual DC comics, and that I'm looking forward to. As far as comic recommendations, it's fairly straightforward. The Milestone Media was active for four years from 1993 to 1997, and in the case of all of the Milestone and Dakotaverse heroes, I recommend checking out their entire comic runs. Most can be found in graphic novel compilations. Uh, We'll have a list to a list of appearances of at least Rocket across a number of comics, including the Icon comic, of course, Superman, Justice League, and more. But with all that, unfortunately, there's not much more to talk about with Rocket and Icon. I'm, I'm honestly hoping that Young Justice will give us more to talk about with Rocket and Icon and dive deeper into their uh, galactic history. Uh, So that wraps up our episode nine of Secret Origins. The next time on Secret Origins, we'll be jumping ahead five years and start discussing the season two team, starting with Jaime Reyes, a.k.a. Blue Beetle. Of course, you can find us on Twitter at The YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at theyjfiles.tumblr.com, and on our website, www.crashingthemode.com. If you enjoy our show, please consider sharing it with a friend. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings really do help others find the show. If you do leave us a rating or review, please let us know, especially if you're outside the U.S. We have to look a little harder to find those. And even though Season 3 has been officially announced and is well underway, please continue to spread the word to friends and family about the series, Hashtag buy YJ Comics on Comixology to hopefully get us more stories even sooner and get yourself up to speed for the Season 3 premiere. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening and stay whelmed.